Institute survey, India's economic growth has lifted more than 100 million people out of desperate poverty since 1985. And as India's population grew by 352 million during this period, then over 400 million fewer people live in desperate poverty today than would have if GDP had remained at the 1985 level. And we should remind ourselves at a graduation ceremony for students of business and management that economic growth is generated by business and that these businesses need professional, well-trained managers. You'll recall from your lectures on strategic management that Michael Porter claims that there are just two generic strategies for firms, cost leadership and differentiation. And I want to spend just a few minutes talking about what you're going to have to do in the future to make a difference, to be innovative, and to ensure the continued growth of the Indian economy. The typical pattern of industrialization and development, and we saw this with Japan and we're now seeing it with China and India, is that newly industrializing countries gain most of their competitive advantages in the early phase of industrial development from their low cost position. But this is not sustainable and continued economic growth requires a great deal of innovation in these economies as well. We saw it in Japan, we're seeing it increasingly in India, I'm not sure how visible yet it is in China. Now you've been taught in your Bradford degree the nuts and bolts of management and in particular what we know about how to run businesses efficiently. The challenge for each of you is now to work out how to do new things, to create new products and to make old products in new ways. Again, look at Japan. The first threat to Western markets was in consumer electronics. Not only were these cheaper than those made by Americans and Europeans, what customers quickly discovered was they didn't go wrong. Japanese <coughs> manufacturers had invented total quality management and lean production. And then Japanese industry began product innovations in earnest. The first desktop photocopier, the fax machine, the Walkman, VHS video recorders and so on. So this is the challenge for you. You need to make a difference. The best way to make a difference is to innovate. Innovation is the key strategic objective. Some people use the phrase innovate or die. And it's a slogan that's literally true. A relatively recent study of the longevity of the top 100 FT listed companies showed that their average life expectancy was 40 years. And the firms that lasted longest were the ones that completely changed their businesses, often not just once, but twice or three times. <coughs> Here's my Nokia mobile phone. If you think of Nokia as a company, that began life felling trees and making cables before engaging in at least two complete transformations. And I have to confess that we at the School of Management and here at ILM probably too, haven't taught you how to do this properly. A challenging article by Gary Hamill argues that business schools are about 100 years behind the leading edge of practice. He points out that Frederick Taylor invented scientific management in the early 20th century, 100 years after mass production was invented in the Springfield Armory in Massachusetts. In the early 21st century, we are only beginning to understand how to manage innovation 100 years after the formation of the first science and technology-based industries based on electricity and chemicals. What we have done in this program, I hope, is, pro is to provide you with some important building blocks and basic management principles, together with a curiosity and appetite for knowledge. If you are going to succeed, and India is going to continue to succeed, you will need to keep learning throughout your lives. I envy you your opportunities and wish you well in your pursuit of them. Good luck and best wishes. <coughs> Vice-Chancellor, I certify that the candidates to be presented at this congregation have complied with all the conditions required by the University to qualify for their awards. Rosmina Batia, Associate Dean of the Undergraduate Business School, requests leave to present candidates of IILM Undergraduate Business School. Vice-Chancellor, sir. 
I present to you candidates from ILM Undergraduate Business School to be admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Science of the University of Bradford. Following are the students who are awarded Bachelor of Science in Accounting and Finance. Ankit Jindal. Vyani June Gauri Patricia Neha Gupta Param Pratap Sadana Rajiv Pugla Ria Chopra 